I welcome you all to the seventh lecture hosted by the Association of Indian Research Scholars, or AIRS, as we call it. We are back once again, and I hope you all are doing well. Today's lecture is titled Psychological Warfare, Theory and Practical Implications, and we are so very happy to welcome our speaker, Nuno Rodriguez, who is Director, Political Scientist, and Analyst, the Quixote Globe Madrid, Spain. Before we further get to know our speaker, I would first like to read the introduction to the inception of our association, S. <clears throat> All right. The Association of Indian Research Scholars, also known as S, is the brainchild of Ariba Esanat Moazam, the president of this association. It was created to bring together like-minded, intellectually inclined, and enthusiastic research scholars of our generation and to collectively increase our knowledge base while also interacting with the best minds in the world. To this end, we have garnered the support of some of the best in their field, including Professor Mohammed Moazam Ali, Professor and former HOD, Dep Department of Political Science, University of Hyderabad, Professor Zoya Hassan, Professor Emerita, Center for Political Studies, Jawaharlal Nehru University, Professor Alfredo Toro Hardy, who is a retired Venezuelan diplomat, scholar, professor, and public intellectual. Dr. Aparna Devare, assistant professor at the University of Hyderabad. Professor Rajan Harshe, professor of political science and the former vice chancellor of Allahabad Central University. And many scholars from across the world, including Nuno Rodriguez, who is director, Quixote Global from Madrid, Spain. Paul Simonski from Space Strategy Center, Carnegie Mellon University, New Mexico, USA. The aim of an association like S is to not only provide a platform for young scholars to connect with experts, but also to have intellectually stimulating and interactive sessions with them. In order to make this happen, we aim to host webinars, e-lectures, seminars, talks, book discussions, and distinguished lectures. In the future, we also, to intend, we also intend to expand towards doing conferences, seminars, symposiums, and other book discussion panels. Through these mediums, AIRS intends to, pro pro to promote a seamless and harmonious interaction and engagement between the social sciences and humanities communities in the country. It also aspires to bring together people to hold discussions, debates, and conversations on theory, research methodology, research ethics, research practices, and methods to expand the research community and to bring everyone within one ambit. The future of AIRS holds dynamic experiences. We intend to bring the Indian community closer to the international community, not only through lectures and seminars, but also through publication. AIRS intends to focus on the most relevant issues in the world and the various pressing scenarios on the national and international scene. Following AIRS will help you stay on the top of not only current affairs and get an in-depth analysis of burning topics, but it will also give you the opportunity to expand your knowledge base through the diversity of our events. We would like to mention that we have four publication opportunities. Our president has been appointed as a reviewer for Millennium Journals of Millennium Journal of Humanities and Social Sciences. We have also been approached by DSA or Defense Security Alert team asking for articles. We would like to our viewers to take a look at the links which will be provided on our various WhatsApp and Telegram groups and to do the needful. Yet another publishing opportunity has been offered to us in the form of Journal of Indo-Pacific Affairs, which engages with an array of topics from defense policy to international relations. And finally, Global Dialogue Review, an internationally circulated foreign policy journal from India, has also opened an entryway for articles through S. You can submit your papers to the official mail, which is aribamuazam at airscholars on microsoft.com. Our mail will be on the chat box for accuracy. You can follow S on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, WhatsApp, Telegram. You can also follow our site, airs.org.in. And with that, we come to the end of the introduction to AIRS. I now call upon Rajesh Kumar, 
who is an assistant professor of the Department of English, School of Language, Literature and Society, Jaipur University, Jaipur National University, Jaipur, to introduce the speaker. Thank you, and over to you, Rajesh. Thank you, Ivan. Good afternoon to everyone. So, today's guest, uh, Professor Nuno J. Rodriguez, is a political scientist and analyst director and analyst at Cohito Globe, a political diplomatic public relations and strategy consulting platform. Rodriguez is a graduate political scientist from the Universidad Compulsense de Madrid and specialized in political communication at the University of Amsterdam. He is an expert in intelligence and counterintelligence and has extensive knowledge in audiovisual language, narratives and counter narratives. He has worked on researchers, researches funded by the European Union on the influence of the media on society. For this reason, he has developed analyti analytical and critical cap capacities on the influence of the media system on the formation of patterns of behavior in society. He has also written several articles on psychological warfare, propaganda, and intelligence. Additionally, Professor Rodriguez is a political analyst for different television programs with an international, international scope. So with this, with this I, uh, we move forward and I would like to ask Zeva to carry the session forward. Thank you. I thank you so much, Rajesh, for that uh, lucid and succinct introduction to the speaker. Uh, sir, now I call upon you to uh, please start your lecture. Well, well do, do you hear me? Yes, sir. You're yes, audible. sir. You're audible, sir. Yes, sir. You're audible. Okay. Well, the, the first of all, I would like to thank you, all of you, for attending this uh, online lecture on uh, psychological warfare. Uh, uh, psychological warfare is not an, an issue uh, that is uh, very well analyzed today in the, in the schools or in the universities. And, and it's a pain because the psychological warfare uh, today is a very important tool to control the populations and to control the, uh, the politics and to control the way that the democracies are being governed. But however, the, the psychological warfare is not something new. Uh, when we are talking about this, this concept, we have to, to realize that we are talking about psychology and we are talking about warfare. The psychology is the, the, the study, the analyze of the mind of the, and, and the behaviors of the people and the population. The warfare, warfare is an open conflict. What does it mean that the, the psychology is being applied in the, in, the, in the war, in the conflict? So the, the, the people's mind is a, is a butterfly. The, the war is coming from the, from the real arena, from the real field to the mind of the people. In that sense, we have to, to realize that the, the mind of the, of the people is it's just another, another warfare, warfare arena. And in that sense, uh, it has been always used. It's, it's, not, it's not something new. We can, we can get the, the old books from Alexander the Great or from the Romans or from, from the Greeks or even from, from India. And all the, all the empires, all the, all the armies have uh, had psychological tools to influence to the, to the enemy to influence to the to the soldiers, to influence to the civil population. In that sense, and uh, the Romans and then the Mongols and so many others use the rumors to to fight against the psychology of the enemy. They they spread rumors uh, saying that they were bloody killers or that they were very dangerous. In in that sense, the the enemy yeah, they got got fear. Uh, they, they got information about how wide the, the enemy is 
and the, the cytology of the soldiers were breaked up. So in that sense, the, the cytology, the psychological warfare has always been used, has, has always been deployed. The, the only thing is that in the, in the modern world, the, the psychology has been very well analyzed. And, and the, te the technology uh, has supplied so many tools, so many te technicals to, to present the sociological warfare, to spread the sociological warfare to the whole population at once. And I mean the, the mass media, and I mean the, the use of the propaganda. And both elements are very well uh, uh, performed, are very well uh, very well, very well analyzed, and in, in that sense, in, when we're talking about the sociological warfare, we have to, to start referring to the, to the First World War. The First World War was the, the moment in the, in the history of the humanity when, when the, uh, the sociology was being more exploited to, to link the will of the population with the will of the politicians. And when we are talking about the modern political warfare, we have to, to realize that we are, we are talking about the, the planet use of communications to influence the human attitudes and behaviors. We have to, to influence the opinions, the emotions, the attitudes, the behaviors of the enemy, of the indigenous and the indigenous population or of the, the enemy population. But today, the sociological warfare is also being used against the, your own population. And the scope of the political warfare is not, uh, is not only the enemy or, or the neutral societies. You, you can target whoever you want. In that sense, um, the, the political warfare that has the, the element of the propaganda, and then the propaganda uh, uh, is very effective when the, the target population is does not notify that is consuming propaganda. And for for this purpose, the, the propaganda is always disguised as uh, entertainment. And entertainment or, or education. Every single day, every single moment, we are we are exposed to the mass media. We are we are being exposed to propaganda. When we are going to the cinema, we are also being exposed to propaganda. If we are listening to the radio, we are also being exposed to propaganda. We don't really notify that, but um, every single uh, media uh, content has a will to influence the, the psychology of the audience. In that sense, we had to, you know, that in the, in the First World War, then the use of the, of the mass media, it was limited because then it wasn't a lot of mass media in the, in the beginning of the, last, of the last century. We had the newspaper, mainly of them were province newspaper, a few national newspapers, and a, a, a very narrow scope for, for mass media. It, 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 it wasn't proper to call it mass media, it's only media. But even with that, uh, along with the use of, of pamphlets, of leaflets, or so many cultural events, so many painters, or so many writers, books, poems, magazines, newspaper, with, whichever means what used to to spread the propaganda. And the propaganda was being already scientific. What does it mean with scientific? That it means that the, the propaganda was not something that just come out, come out of the blue. The, the propaganda was being prepared, was, was being performed previously in laboratories, in uh, universities, in sociological departments, in the political science departments, sociology departments, and it was being tested uh, before uh, being broadcast to the to the white audience. So we are we are talking about we already have a scientific tool that is being used as a weapon, as a war as a war weapon. 
Uh, in that sense, then the propaganda and then the sociological warfare is exactly the same that the gun, that the cannon, that the bomb. It's just another another tool in the arsenal of the of the armies. And in the in the First World War, uh, we have a, a very interesting uh, use uh, apl uh, applications of the propaganda in the United States. And we have first the the Committee of Public Information, also known as the, the Creel Committee. Uh, it was directed by your, by George Clear. And they have the, the goal to, to lead the public opinion of the United States towards a war on Europe. Uh, this was the Committee of the Public Information. Then, then we have also a, another sociological warfare division in the, in the army. It was directed by, wait a second, I have the notes here and I have a lot of notes. Well, it was, it was the captain, captain Herbert Blackhorn. And uh, both of them had the different goals in the, in the world. And then the more important for, for the study of the sociological warfare today is the, the Creel Commission, the Committee of the Public Information. Because uh, at that moment, the, the public opinion, the, 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 the population of the United States didn't have any interest in the European war. It was a war of colonial powers, it was a war of the, of the old continent. They didn't have nothing to do with that. And uh, somehow the, uh, the governments and the politicians have a very, very big interest in joining the war. We also know the economical reasons of the First World War. But, but. And the, the, the Creel Commission, they have applied all the tools of the, psycho the psychology, the, the political science, the sociology, and, and many other uh, academic and scholars departments to, to influence the public opinion. And they have used that with, uh, with different formats. They, they wrote books, they have uh, create, create news, they have uh, made so many pictures because they, they knew that uh, so many people in, in America and in, the, and in the world at that time, they didn't know to read, they were illiterate. For that reason, they, they have the, they have the, the ability, the goal of uh, providing complex information through images, through pictures. A person who is not able to read the new needs to be rich as well. Um, even more, if they are the main part of the population, it was more important to reach the illiterate than to, to read the literate. And in, in that sense, we have something that's called the visual intelligence. With the visual intelligence, what we are doing is that it's, like it's presenting complex information with a single picture. This is something that we are, we are seeing that today, every day where we are reaching the internet, we are entering in, in Twitter, we see the memes with the, with the memetics. The, a meme, and the only thing he's doing is he's presenting that. He's presenting an issue, a complete issue, with a single uh, representation, with a single photo, with a single draw, with, with, a, with a very single way to, to present in that. And also the, 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 public, uh, the public information committee, then the Greek commission has the has the, the, the goal of uh, influencing the, the foreign countries, mainly the neutral countries, to, to don't support Germany in the, in the world. And in that sense, then the Greek Commission has become the biggest propaganda uh, apparatus, the bigger propaganda body that had ever been seen in the modern, in the modern world. And they, they have open offices in all, the, in all the countries of Europe, in the mainly of the countries of America, in the mainly of the countries of, in, 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 a, in a lot of countries of Asia. And in, in, in all these offices, they have a team working to influence the, the host population and the host politicians to, to support the United States. And they have to do that through the, with the propaganda, with, by paying to the newspapers to, to publish news, Paying to the cinemas to, to broadcast to films, 
begging to the writers or to the to the national celebrities to to support their, their wills, to support the the United States uh, goals. And in that sense, then they have explored, they have and then and they have exploited so many ways to use the the psychology to to win to win the, the influence, to win the will of the population. Uh, in that sense, we have to, to remember it was in the in the 19th century that it was the, uh, the French and the German army uh, performing a content that it was the hearts and hearts and mind. The, the the goal of the of the French army in in the in the China it was to, to win the hearts and mind of the population because they know they knew that uh, if they don't have the support of the population it was impossible to to rule the area. And in that sense, they, they started to, to perform, to, to create a, a body of knowledge of how the army can use the psychology of the population to, to win goals. In the, in the First World War, it was massive. It was not only uh, winning the, the, the hearts of mind of the population, but making a government to, to support your will or to, to, reject, to reject the support to, to Germany. In that sense, in, in Spain, I'm, I'm based in Spain here, Spain was a, a neutral country in the, in the First World War, War. but uh, it was a, a very important battlefield for the propaganda apparatus of the German the German army and from the English and from the French and from the, from the American propaganda. And here we have so many, so many interesting, interesting data about how the propaganda had been used. Uh, in that sense, it was the, the embassies of the French and the, and the, uh, the English and the, and the American war, they were sending the, the propaganda to the media, to the newspapers, and openly, it, it wasn't a secret that it was the, the letter was going from the embassy to the to the to the newspaper, and later on, a few days later, from the newspaper to the embassy, the, there was going the invoice for the the payment of the the publication of the propaganda. In that sense, it was a, it was not covert. It was openly. It was the, the propaganda was something. It was open. It was public. It was. Then they were they were not hiding about that. It was exactly that the the the, the Greek Commission, the Greek Commission was a public body. It was a, everybody knew who was just clear, and everybody knew who, who what, what they were doing. No, the, there was not a, a secret. The propaganda was a tool of war, pure. And well, uh, this has been a, a very important uh, tool of war. And uh, the first thing in, to analyze what was the, the efforts of the propaganda in the in the First World War, we had to to know what Clausewitz in the, the art of propaganda was establishing as a a good uh, country, a solid country, a solid society. And we had to know that um, Clausewitz is giving us three elements: the the Clausewitz Trinity. It means that the, the emotions of the populations have to be linked with the operative skills of the army. And the operative skills of the army have been linked to the strategic goals of the political of the political health, of the political leaders. All the three elements must work together, must work synchronized. And the, the goal of this, uh, the psychology warfare of the English was to break the Clausewitz Trinity. What was happening with that? That the, the target of the, the English propaganda was the, uh, the, German, the German population. And at the end of the, of the conflict, the German population was totally demoralized. They were psychology broke down. They were totally depressed. There, were, there was not a link between the, the German population and the, and the German politicians, and more even with the army. The German army has the revolution with inside the, the, the trench and then the soldiers. They have uh, the socialist uh, agitators. They have the sub subversions in the in the troops, and that was a, a complete division 
between the three elements, between the population, between the army, and between the, uh, the, the political leaders. And all of this have been used with the propaganda, with the English propaganda. And then they have, and they have done that very well. And the English uh, have done that uh, so well that they, they were afraid that some other countries could do the same to, to their own country. And for that reason, it's called Scotland Yard. Uh, had set up, uh, had prepared a department to control the use of propaganda against against England inside inside, inside England, and they were they were analyzing the, all the mass media in England. They were doing content analysis, just trying to find if some other country was was deploying propaganda to the to the English population, and they they were very afraid for that because because. They did it very well with the German. Then the German population didn't want war anymore. The only the only thing that the German population wanted at the end of the First World War, it was to sync up whichever agreement, whichever peace treatment, just to stop the war. The, the German population didn't want war anymore. They didn't want to fight. They didn't want to go to the battle fights. Nobody wanted to, to join the army. It was something pretty negative. It was a, a very big mistake. It was something that had to, to, to be stopped now. And that's what they did. They, they provoked to, to stop the war in a, in a, in a very hard terms, right? By seeing in the, in the peace agreement with the, with the, other, with the other countries. And uh, in that sense, we had to, to realize that it was the, the psychology of the population was a, a stronger factor to stop the war than the, than the war factor, than the, the, the conventional war tools. It was the psychology of the German population who, who used the war. And, and the German army knew that. And the German army was, was pretty well aware of what was going on. The, they knew that the, the enemy has won the, the German army not fighting in the, in the battle flight. Not fighting man to man, not, not fighting like in a, a conventional warfare. The German army uh, did know; they knew that uh, the, 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 the enemy won the war with the with the propaganda, with the use of lift, lift, lifters, with pamphlets, with uh, with fake news. Because uh, now today. <coughs> We're always talking about fake news, but fake news is something old. It's not new. There is there has always been, been fake news, and in the in the First World War, it was very important because the the Great Commission and some other psychological warfare departments from England and from from France and from from the United States, they were flooding huge amounts of uh, fake news to the mass media. With the, with the only aim of uh, gaining the will of the population towards their, their goals. But the, the fake news that they, they were found in the, in the mass media in, in that time, it was, so, so many of them were, them were exactly the same as in the Second World War. They were talking about factories that had been changing, changing to, to convert the bodies of the soldiers in soul. Uh, they were talking about the, the German, German soldiers raping nuns or raping childs and making, making atrocities. And this was named uh, atrocity propaganda. Atrocity propaganda was scientific propaganda because they knew perfectly how the audience uh, behaved, how the audience uh, behaved uh, after being exposed to the uh, atrocity propaganda. A person that is in the United States reading the news that about a, a soldier that has been crucified or about a child that has been raped. They produce, produce race. They, they hated the, the German soldiers. Every single person in the United States uh, started to hate the Germans because they, they, they were believing the fake news that they were reading every single day in the, new, in the newspapers. And with the atrocity propaganda, the your Quill Commission has won the mind of the of the public of the public audience. Because now we, we have to see that we have a, two directions. 
of the psychological warfare. We have a one direction that is towards the, the enemy population, and we have another direction, direction that is toward our own population, as is the case with the, with the atrocity propaganda in the news media. In that sense, it was uh, Lord Arthur Falsovi has brought the book, it's a falsehood in the war time. It's very interesting to read, you, you can find this online, I guess. It's a, it's a, a compendium about a content, content analysis uh, about all the fake news that had been found in the, in the media in that time and the, the impossibility to, to have a factual check about what the people was, was being reading. And then there are news that are, are complete, complete atrocities. You know, it's like a, well, they are making soap with bodies. They are they are burning charts and they are doing the most horrible things you can you can do. And, and at the end, it was impossible. Then there there was no way to 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 fact check the the news. And it, it was the propaganda. It, this is something that we are. We are suffering that every single day we are reaching the the mass media. We have so many so many news that it's impossible to, to fact check, and even even the fact check agencies that we are seeing now all over the world, I mean, are being propaganda. They, they are trying to, to say what is true and or what is not true, and or what what we had to read, what we know we had to read, what what we had to believe or disbelieve. The propaganda is. Is contaminated all the information that we are consuming in, uh, today. In the Second World War, it wasn't pretty pretty different. But uh, in the Second World War, the psychological warfare that has been that, that has been performed, it was much more developed. It was much more developed because well, they had the knowledge of the of the experience of the First World War, and it was the. the it was also uh, more more, uh, more performance, more developed because of the of the mass media. In the Second World War, we have already the, the radio, and then the radio has been a, a tool of war, a tool of war to to spread propaganda all over the world. It was it was a wonderful, a wonderful, a wonderful tool to to, to spread the propaganda. We have to know that even in Goebbels, the, uh, the Minister of Propaganda of, of Adolf Hitler, uh, they were giving radios for free to the population because they knew that, that it, was, it was a perfect way to, to communicate with the, with the audience in, the, in, 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 in a mass way. And also, the, uh, oh, one time then when, the, when the war was going on, they, they realized that the German, that, that the French resistance was, was using also the radio to, to send commands to the, to the partisan and to some other rebels. And Goebbels had this, uh, well, some, some members of the army were, were proposing to withdraw the radios from the French population. And Goebbels said that no, that it was much better than the French to have the radios that don't have the radios. And he didn't mind even when the even when the enemy even when the enemy was using also the radio to communicate with the with the commands, with the brigades or with the with the people. Goebbels preferred the people to 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 get the radios to, to still consuming the French the, the German propaganda. In that sense, with, with the radio, we have so we have many, many, many examples of the, the use of propaganda against the enemy. And we have to realize now that we are we have three 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 types of propaganda. We have the white propaganda, we have the black propaganda, and we have the gray propaganda. With the white propaganda, the, the speaker the, is, is well known. Is uh, you can recognize who is, who is talking, you can recognize the source. You can recognize if it's a politician, if it's not a politician. After all, you know who is talking. You know who is uh, who is giving you the information. With the black, with the black propaganda, is 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 totally the, the contrary. You don't you don't know who is talking. You don't know who is providing you the information. And the the propagandists is used to disguise as as whoever, as a member of the resistance, as a member of the the army, as a member of the population. And in, in that sense, the, the radio, it was full of black propaganda. 
and then the Germans they have a, a radio program. It was named the uh, well on the French name the the traitor program because it, it was supposed that it was a, a French soldier from the from the army, uh, a French patriotic against the uh, well supporting the, uh, the the French cause and supporting the uh, the French country. And he was sending the black propaganda to the to the French audience. And and at the end, what the what, what the people minds have, it was German propaganda disguised it as a German patriotic men talking. It was also in the there, there are many, 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 many examples of how the radio had been used to to spread black propaganda. There was another another program in the, in the Pacific area. It was an, an English speaking program. It was named the Tokyo Rose. Tokyo Rose was a music and enter entertainment program that was being consumed by the, by the American soldiers. And the American soldiers were consuming that program thinking that it was only music, entertainment, that they were learning something about the, the Asian countries. Um, they have a very lovely voice as a speaker, as the, the host of the of the of the program. It was it was Tokyo Tokyo Rose. And it was interesting that uh, when when Tokyo Rose was providing information, the she was providing the process information. Uh, maybe he's playing a song, and after a song, he's saying, "Well, you have you soldier had to remember that your girlfriend is in your country meeting other men." What will happen at the end? That the, the soldiers get the press with that information. After another song, the soldiers were dancing, and then they were Tokyo Rose was broadcasting how the fake news about defeated of the American army in some Asian countries. In, the, in that sense, the Tokyo Rose was doing a very, very good work because pretending to be an English speaker pro American uh, program, and they, uh, she was providing depressive information to the American soldiers. What was happening with that? The American soldiers didn't want to to stay at war. The only thing they were thinking about it was on their girlfriend that they were in, she was in the United States meeting another man. How how can you how can you work with that in mind? How can you how can you fight when you are when you are seeing that your army is being defeated in with with weak armies all around all around you? The, the black propaganda is a very dangerous uh, propaganda because it pretends to, to be on your side. And when you are accepting the host, when you are accepting the, the speaker has your, your own level, you are, you, your will is to, to believe what you are listening. If you have any doubt about who, who is talking, maybe you, you hesitate. But with the, with the black propaganda, it's very it's very difficult to to distinguish what is true, what is not true. In that sense, we have to realize that, that in, in the Second World War, the radio has been a very very powerful use uh, tool of war, and this uh, stuck like that until today, because in, in the Second World War, we have seen that. Well, it's, it was many people. Maybe you, you can find my, my articles online, and and you can you, you can you can say how how pretty well developed what the the psychology of the of the of the psychology warfare of the the, the psychology the psychology element that have been have been used again against the population, and it was all the academics, all the scholars of the United States, all the the psychiatrists political science and sociologists, all of them, they, they were working in research, in analyze ways to, to prepare propaganda tools, propaganda techniques to, to influence the enemy and the, and the enemy's population. And, and it, had, it was worked. But as I told you before, the, the German army in the First World War knew perfectly what was going on with the propaganda. In the Second World War, they, they were aware 
and they have prepared the, the propaganda with Goebbels, with the radio, with, uh, with everything. And they have deployed in the, in the field, in the population, so many elements that uh, destroy the, the psychology of the population. And one of the, one of the elements was the, the use of the slogan and the, the simplification. The simplification of the message had been used as something hypnotic. Uh, the German army, or the, the, the German propaganda bodies, was uh, broadcasting once and, once, and, once and again, once and over and over and over, exactly the same message, the same slogans. And you, was, you were going to the street and what you see, you see posters with exactly the same slogan. It, it was a brainwashing. Of the of the population, they they were hypnotizing the, the society, and and all the people who who believed that was okay. Well, you won their minds already, but then the other people who don't who don't buy that, who, who disagree with this slogan, who has, who has a, a mental uh, resistance to the to the propaganda, they have another tool. They have the rumors because in the in Holland, for example, when Jos Merlo, Jos Merlo was a, a psychiatrist that was analyzing the, the German propaganda deployed in, in, the, in the Netherlands in the, in the Second World War, he had realized that the, so, many, so many people uh, was willing to join the resistance. So many people was, was willing to fight the, uh, the Germans. And so many people, some people was willing to, to fight the Germans. And for these people, they have a, a very, very specific tools. It was the rumors. It was the rumors, and, and they were spreading the rumors that the, the resistance you, are, you want to join is, is a fake resistance. It's, it's a German intelligence agency that is, is being set up to, to know who is, uh, who is willing to fight against the Germans. Another rumor is like that these people you are you are listening this radio program you are listening from the resistance is also black propaganda from from the Germans. What uh, what can you achieve with this uh, with these tools? You can achieve that the people hesitate, and if the if the people hesitate, if the resistance is a is, is a real resistance, or if the information you are receiving through the resistance is real information. At the end, you don't do nothing. They want you through your mind. They they get you to, to do nothing just with the psychology. In that in that sense, it was brilliant the use of the rumors by the by the German army. And we we have that today. We only have to, to reach the on the media. We can find all the elements of the propaganda in in all kind of social media or mass media or, or whatever, because it's something that after the, the deep analysis and the deep, deep study of propaganda after the two world wars, is something that is standardized, in the, it's a standard in the mass media. It has, it has normalized the, in, 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 in the mass media in all, in all the world. For that reason, after the after the Second World War, the the psychological warfare stopped being only warfare tool, and it started to be a, a normal a political tool for the political campaigns, for the political governance, for the political democracy, um, and the psychological uh, tools started to be. To be applied in the in your own population, it wasn't anymore against an enemy. There, there was even a, a war. It was in in the United States after the, after the 1945. The, the the president started started to use all, all the psychological tools against uh, its own population, and it was in the in the news broadcasts and in the in the cultural sphere, in the in the cinema, in in all the in, in all the mass media that was being very good performance in the, in the United States, it was already propaganda. And that's, that is how we, we, we have joined in the Cold War, because the Cold War, it was in, in major, major terms, it was a propaganda war from the United States and from the Soviet Union. Both, both of the actors were 
who were expert professional deploying propaganda. In the, in the United States, first, we have the, the propaganda itself. But in the, in the Soviet land, what we have is you know, this information, active measures. Um, and we have uh, different goals to achieve between each other. Because at the end, what the, what the propaganda is trying to do is to, to persuade the population against the, the enemy goals or towards your goals. But it's to persuade, to, to change, to modify. The, the disinformation, what is trying to do is to, to influence in the decision making. And then this information is fake news or how fake news or how to know if this is true or if it's not true. But at the end, you, you need to take that as a factual information because, because then they know how to do that. It's like a, when you are trying to make an, an intelligent analysis, an intelligent research, you are collecting information and the, this information the, or what I have to do is to include the fake news within your with your information collection. In that trend in the in the in the Soviet Union, they have a, the the department D from the Czechoslovakia from the from the Czechia intelligence services. And they were specialized in in influencing the the the, the Western population and the Western politicians through through the fake news, through the false information. And in the in the Cold War, uh, we had to, to realize as well that uh, it was the Western population who had more to lose. Why the, the Western population ha, had more to lose? Because the, the freedom of speech, because the, uh, the freedom of the media. Uh, in the in the Soviet Union, it, it was impossible to insert Western propaganda in the media because they were controlled by the uh, by the government. In the Western country, it, it was possible to to deploy the ideological subversion. That it was it was one of the elements that the, the Soviet Union was using as a psychological warfare against the West. It was the, the promoting of the, the Communist Party and the promoting of the ideological subversion against the, the own Western democracies. And at the same time, in the Western media, the, the, they were working, the, the governments of the, the, the Western you know, or the United States, but, but also in the Western media was working the United the, in the Soviet Union. In that sense, we have to, to realize that it was it was a win 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 situation for, for, for the Soviet Union. And uh, from from this uh, scenario, uh, we have to, to realize that the, the Western democracy has started to deploy uh, more and deep psychological tools, not only against the not, not only against the, 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 the population, but against the, the decision makers, about the politicians and everything uh, in, the, in the mass media, in the, in the Western societies uh, today, is filtered through the intelligence services. But in, in many countries, it's happening that. Uh, it's happening in Cuba, it's happening in Iran, it's happening in Russia, it's happening in Venezuela. The information that has to be a spread that has to be presented to the white audience that it had to, to pass through filters because um, it is not possible to go to the to the mass audience with your own information and well now that we have to realize that as well that the the sociological warfare is not only a, a way to govern but it's a way to to do the public diplomacy and the public diplomacy today of the of the government is named a strategic influence. It's exactly the same, but with another name. And and it's it, it's kind of the same that the the Creel Commission with the the public information committee, but it used to be something permanent abroad. And and we have to to know that uh, so many public relations firms are working always 
for other governments within your own country just to to justify to to promote the ideals of this country uh, we we have so many examples maybe the because of the nature of the United States, we have many examples of how these, these tools are being used because we have free information in the United States. This doesn't mean that the United States is the only country using these tools. Russia, for example, this is professional with the, with the active measure and with the, uh, with, the, with the fake information. But in that sense, we, we have so many names of the of, of agencies that are working for the for the government of the of the United States just to promote the interest of the of this country in the in the Middle East or in Asia or or in Europe or wherever. We have we have many 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 examples of doing that. In fact, the the, the Marshall Plan after the, the Second World War, it has been an, it have been linked to a very very interest propaganda propaganda campaign because when Europe has been flowed with the uh, with the uh, mass media from the United States with the newspapers with the magazines with the the red yes that it was a magazine that it was the perfect example of the the black propaganda to, towards the the European audience and. Today, this uh, this prestige press that it was supposed that it was the press that is telling you the truth. It's 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 a state has a has a prestige press. It, it is still working and and it, it is known that many people that has been working the sociological division in the Second World War have have joined later on to the uh, to the main newspaper of the United States. Then the people of the, of the sociological division they have been working in the New York, in the New York Times, in the Washington Times, and they were working later on in the television, in the TVN, in the ATV, and all the all the private media that they were uh, we are seeing in the United States has been improved with the with the performance with the work of many people coming from the coming from the, uh, the sociological divisions of the army. And because uh, we have uh, George Orwell, the, the writer of the 18, uh, 1984, the, the novel, uh, the, the dystopian novel, he he been also working in the, in the BBC in England. And he lived the, he lived the BBC because uh, he was complaining that there, there were no, no, no journalists working in the BBC but the a very big amount of the people working in the BBC, they were intelligent uh, intelligent agents. They were work, working for, for the intelligence of the country. They were not journalists providing information to the public. And in that sense, we have to know that uh, uh, in, in every conflict, in every single conflict we have in the world, we have a, a sociological warfare uh, preparing the minds of the people for what is going to come. Uh, we, we can see the, the movies, we can see the news, we can see the, the newspaper, the social, the social media. There is always a sociological campaign trying to win the, the hearts of mind of the, of the population, just to assume that uh, what is going to happen is going to happen because they, they, they kill, because they blame of the enemy. If uh, if a country had to drop tons of bombs over the population of other country, there is always, always, always a, a huge amount of propaganda trying to convince the population that the, the blame of this to happen is your own government. It's not the government throwing bombs. Is 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 the is the the blame is the uh, that you have a corrupt democracy that you have a corrupt leaders that you. Your leaders are taking wrong decisions, and you have to accept that uh, bombs are going to be dropped over your house. Yeah, this is propaganda. Propaganda is uh, accepting that the uh, the blame is always the uh, the enemy. It's, it's never your fault. And we have uh, we have many many more elements on on the propaganda and then the uh, the sociological warfare and. On, and all of them has been has been uh, 
improve in the in the in, in, in the scientific sphere. Now we have the, the neuro, neurological aspect of the of the sexological warfare because we are not talking only about the psychology, well, we are we are talking about the physical elements that uh, accomplish the mind, as is the neurons. Now today the the armies are not talking about psychological warfare. What they are talking about is about neocortical warfare. They are using the neurons as a warfare because they, they know how to affect the neuron. They 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 have went beyond the, the psychology. They are they are using the neuroscience to to affect the minds of the population. And in that sense, we are going beyond the propaganda, we are going beyond the disinformation and the active, active measure, and we are we are reaching something that uh, Foucault has named the bio power. What is happening with the bio power? That uh, the biology is a is a very way a very good way to control the populations. And if we want to control the populations, and we can use the the, the aliments, the 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 eat, the food that they eat. We can control the uh, the chemicals in the in the brain. We can control so many biological elements that are going to affect the minds people, the people's mind. And in in this time, and we are now we are now in the neocortical warfare. Now the, the propaganda and the disinformation is something that has been normalized, standardized in the in the mass media. And the way to control the population is going beyond. It's going, it's going to your own body, to your own neurons, to your own brains in physical terms, not in not in psychological terms. And the chemicals, the um, the psychobiotic, the the, the psych uh, psychomedicine, psychodrugs, and and so many other elements are are being used to, to change the the wills of the populations. And now, it's like in the future, everything will pass through the uh, through the chemical and through the electrical compulsions of the of the body. The 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 psychological warfare will be a still assisted. It will be because the propaganda will always be, be necessary. The only thing is that, is that now we are knowing we have elements to make the population to believe the propaganda more, more deeply than previously. We, we have the elements to break in physical terms, the resistance of the of the of the minds that the of the people can have, the the diet, the the aliments that the people is consuming, the the, the habits, the life habits. It is it's sporting, it's not sporting. It's uh, it's reading, it's not reading. We have so many physical elements that we had to work previously to to deploy a, a propaganda campaign. And well, I think. This is this is mainly all I had to say about the sociological warfare because now we are we are, we are joining in the in the ne ne neurological field, the neurological warfare, and it's something it's something complicated as well, but it's something more physical, it's something more medical, and I didn't prepare it properly. I would like to know if you have any question about the the use of the sociology and the the propaganda in the war time I and mean, in the, the peace time or if I can if I can ask so many any any question you might have about it. Thank you so much sir. Am I audible? Yeah. Yeah thank you so much interesting arguments and observations about such a complex issue sir it is a very relevant topic for scholars from India especially because little work has been carried out in this country this topic and we have few questions sir um, let me begin by saying that uh, uh, people all want to know if you can give some examples which are non-european of where psychological warfare was used in the world maybe from the global south um, uh, uh, non-european you mean yes sir well, we have many non-European uh, aspects from, from Asia in the in the old time. 
we uh, we have to know about maybe the Genghis Khan, you know, the Mongols when when they were doing the military spread and when they are doing the military campaign, for example, the Genghis Khan was was telling their soldiers that they, they have to hold three anchors. They, they have each soldier have three fires. So the, the enemy was thinking that there was the triple of soldiers that they, they really have. That was a sociological factor, that was a sociological tool that Genghis Khan was using. Uh, now in, the, in, in Latin America, for example, we have a, <coughs> the use of many governments, mainly the Cuban and the, and the Venezuelan government, they are using cartoons. They are using cartoons to read, to read the children. They are using that in the in the mass media, but they are, they are using it. When you are looking like that, and it seems uh, something innocent, but it, it's something that it had to be consumed by, by the children. But in, in really what they have behind is the political propaganda. This is something that is, is being very very well used and very well spread in the in all the in all the world. And now in non non European. We have at the moment the, the issue with, with the China and Taiwan. China is uh, doing a permanent, a continuous sociological warfare over the Taiwan population. The, the official point of view of the, the Chinese government is being repeated over and over. It's exactly, exactly the same that the, the German the, the German government did with the population with the hypnosis. You are repeating and repeating over again your, your official messages. In, in that sense, it's a, it's a very nice example of the non-European use of the sociological warfare today. And we don't have any more, I tell you. It's like, a, for example, well, <laughs> we have many similar examples like, like that, but it is China, the, the one that is performing the the, the, the most uh, complete sociological warfare over the neighborhood countries. Okay, thank you, sir. So, are you suggesting sir, that these these techniques are used even in non-war period, like even when there is no war going on? Can a state use this on its own population? Of course, of course, every single day, every single day, the mass media is being performing, it's being broadcasting. Uh, sociological warfare elements it being it being broad, broadcasting propaganda then the problem what, that we are having today is that these techniques are not only being used by the government it's also being used by the power groups but power elites but the economical economical think tanks or uh, economical uh, enterprise or um, uh, conglomerations and what is happening with so many when so many actors are performing the sociological warfare in the same media system at the end you have the despair points of view and at the end it don't really have a, a unity it don't really have a, a lot of sense i have to, to know that it was a, a, an author a philosopher a french, french philosopher it was a jekyll Jake Lul uh, have a wonderful uh, analysis of the of the propaganda, and he he said that there, that there are two two kinds of propaganda, two main types of propaganda: the sociological propaganda and the political propaganda. And the socio sociological propaganda is a long term propaganda; is the is the propaganda that is preparing the. The, the shapes and the beliefs and the philo philosophical terms that rule of the society. And the political propaganda is the argumentation, is then the short term propaganda that is giving the argumentation to the, to the sociological propaganda, to the, uh, to the, cultural, the cultural structure. And at the moment in, in, the, in the media, mainly in the Western media, there are many, many groups trying to, to perform different kinds of propaganda, different kinds of sociological propaganda and different kinds of uh, political propaganda. What is, what is happening? It's happening that the society has get polarized. Now everybody is, is reading about the, the polarization of the, 
of the American society or the so many other country societies. And this has been very well prepared because there, there were so many elements that were, were providing the division of the, society, of the society. And in that sense, it, it, we have to, to realize that the, the polarization of the society has been so deep promoted by different groups. It's like, a, it, it can happen in every country. It's in different kinds of propaganda with oh, different okay. goals, targeting exactly the same population. Okay, sir. Thank you for that, sir. We have a question from a participant, <clears throat> Sri Vidya Sujoy. She wants to know if your perspective on the shape that propaganda might take in future uh, against the backdrop of multipolar world, what is the pro uh, shape that pro propaganda might take in future is her question, sir. Uh, can, can you repeat, please? Yeah, what is the shape that propaganda might take in the future? against the background, background, backdrop of multipolar world? The shape of the propaganda that, that, that can have, uh, it's depending, it has, as I told you before, it's like a, we have to realize that we have the, the sociological propaganda, we have the political propaganda. The political propaganda we always go through a slogan, short message, simplification. The, we have Twitter, uh, the, the social media, Twitter have the, the best example of the political propaganda. Then the, the sociological propaganda, it will be, it has always been, been, been deployed uh, through the films, through books, through television programs, and through, through mass media mainly. And, and we have to, no, we, we are in a multipolar world. What is going to happen? That we will we will have a multi society, multicultural world. Each society will will have a different ways to to perform the propaganda, because then the first thing a, a propagandist has to do is to analyze the the target society. You have to know what are the beliefs or the society, who are the leaders, who are the the cultural items who are the how is the society once you have all the information about that society is when you are preparing when you are assembling a, a propaganda a, a propagandist message and for that reason it's not it's not the same to do propaganda in china or in india or in spain than in another country because each society will have difference you have to 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 be aware of this difference because if you want to reach the well, these people and you need to know to know uh, which channels of, uh, of communication they consume, how they consume, at what time they consume. And you have to know that as well that inside the, the different the different societies, inside the different cultures, you have different elements as well. If you want to reach the teenagers, it's not the same as reaching the, the elderly or to reaching the the housewife. If you want to reach a teenager. It's going to be more easy to do that through the music. If you want to reach a housewife, maybe it's going to be more easy to reach the housewife through the, through the television shops, through, through the serials. If you want to reach the, the father of the family, maybe you have to reach him through the newspapers. And in that sense, it's very important. The, what we have to know is that we are hunting minds. We are hunters. Okay? And when you are going to hunt, you, you need to know how the, the hunt is behaving. You, you need to know uh, which is the programs they consume, which channels, how they, how they receive the information. Once you know how they receive the information, is when you can, you can reach them. But you, you, have to, you have to think the propagandist is a mind hunter. It's hunting minds, and they have to analyze how the minds behave. Yes. In different cultures, we have different, different behaviors. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Related to that question is a question by Zeba Tamkanath. She wants to know, how is psychological warfare used, especially in the age of social media? Do the aspects of this kind of warfare restricted to times of war or are they used on daily basis as well? 
then the use of the sociological work in, 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 in social media social. Is, is, is permanent, is continued, and we, we all know the, what the, bot, the bots are. We, we know that there, there are many, many profiles in the social media that are not humans, are, are bots, are intelligent, artificial intelligence. And they are being deployed by the by many governments and by, by, by many power groups. And, and these bots, these artificial intelligence are programmed, programmed to to react when they are when when they are scanning the world. Then they are scanning all the all the comments on Twitter or in Facebook and and and, and they react with a contra argumentation. And so many times in, 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 in all the social media, in the LinkedIn, in Twitter, so, so many times we are interacting with profiles that are not, are not humans. We don't realize that we are talking with a machine. And this is how the, the psychological warfare is being, is being performed in, in the social media. Also, as well, we have a, we, we have a very interesting factor in the social media and is that in the armies, the armies have uh, brigades in uh, controlling the, the social media and, and they behave exactly the same that the bot of, of, the, of the artificial intelligence. It's like uh, one person is having a narrative, so one person is having an argument and five or ten profiles jumps over him just to, to neutralize that argumentation, to neutralize that narrative. Uh, the social media is being a, a battle fight. It's war. Social media is war because it's like it's like the, the people think that they have a, they can have their own their own opinion, but there are so many power groups, so many governments that wants to avoid the, the population to have their their own opinions. And yeah, the, the social media, but. It's easy to, to find the information of the, in the internet about the bots, about the, how, how they name it, the cyber, cyber magicians. Cyber magicians that are the name, that are the, the intelligent, uh, intelligence agents are trying to, to change the, uh, the perception of the, of the issues in the globe. Thank you, sir. The next question is by Rajesh Kumar. He wants to know if is it possible to win a war by psychological warfare? And does this apply in the 21st century? Well, there have been many, many wars um, have been won with the psychological factors. In, in, in fact, when you are when you are winning a war with the psychological factor, it's like uh, when you are not going to start the war. If you if you get to convince the governments of other country to to follow your your wills and you you have win the war you have win the war without starting it and then well as i told in the in the first world war the the german population has been the the present has been man, mentally broken down I and mean, it was the it, it, it was the population uh, under the attack of the psychological warfare by the English who, who had defeated their own governments. The, the, socio, the, so, the psychological warfare can, can be useful to, to win a war before the war is started or in the, when the war is, uh, is already started. But so many, so many times the, we are seeing in, that they, and there are protests in a, in a, in a country. So there, there are subversion and there are the color revolutions. The color revolution are a very, very good example of how the, the psychology can be used to, to overthrow a government and to, to win a war without starting it. But it, it, this is something that is regarding more to the political warfare than the psychological warfare. Because uh, I have to start saying that the psychological warfare is a branch of the political warfare. Political warfare have, 
had so many elements, had, had so many more elements that, that can, be, can be used to overthrow a government. The psychological warfare is only used in the psychological terms. Within the, 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 political, the political warfare, there are many elements regarding only to the psychology that can be used to, to win a war. You know, we have many examples, and you know, as I told you, the, the color revolutions are, are the best example of the use of psychology to promote protest in a country to, to achieve your own goals. Okay, sir, thank you for that. Evangeline wants to know, is there anything like a good propaganda? Can propaganda be good? The propaganda is always good for the for, for the propagandist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course, then the, the, there is good. Uh, well, uh, we have now is is not propaganda, but uh, we have the the naked theory, the naked theory that is coming from the economical field that is then the use of the sociological tools to to change the behavior of the, of the people. The Nazi theory using to, to improve the health and the health condition of the population. In that sense, it's good. Of course, there, there are propaganda that can be used for for good purpose, for for the, for the goodwill of the of the population. Yes, and then, then there can then, then there can be the good propaganda. The only thing is that we don't really see that very much. But yes, there is is the. In the, if you have a look to the sociological governance and the use of the Nazi theory, there are many messages, many propagandist messages that are, are being used for the will of the people. Yes, in that sense, I, I have okay. to say that yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. Narendra Kumar Jarwal wants to know, can we talk of fake news and propaganda? and the impact it has on elections, both in America and India, along with other countries. Fake news and propaganda. Fake you... news used to be disinformation, but it was like, a, like the fake news that had been used in the, in the First World War about the, uh, the atrocity. But uh, the fake news is, is, a, is a branch, it's a, it's a part of the propaganda. Uh, can we can we differentiate the fake news from the, the real news? No, we cannot. And I tell you, what, there is nothing more similar to the truth than a lie. A lie is exactly the, the same structure than, than the truth. But the lie, the fake news, is more prepared, it's more disguised. It has more, more elements to, to be believed. It was a, 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 in that sense, we had the persuasive communication. The, the persuasive communication is, is giving you a rational way to present the information, and it's giving you the emotional supporting elements to, to make the, the information to be believed. In that sense, we have to realize that the fake news is more prepared to be believed than the truth. And the reality is going to be impossible to, to differentiate to, from one another. And the, well, the fake news are, are, are just an element of, of propaganda. And we have so many different propaganda. We have the true propaganda, we have the atrocity propaganda, we have fake news, and we have this information have another has another thing differentiate from propaganda. So the, the second part of the question was how the fake news and propaganda has impacted the elections in America and India. In all the countries, the, it has a, 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 a very important factor, the, the propaganda, because it, the information that we are receiving is going to, to decide with, with decisions we're, we're going to take. If we, are, if we are receiving propaganda that is uh, the person that is against our own political beliefs, uh, what, what is going to happen? That we are going to be the, the mobile side. We are not going to vote. What happened when we are not going to vote? That is the other 
the, the other party voters who are going to vote and is the one who are going to decide which is the which is gonna who is gonna win the election. But the propaganda is totally decisive in uh, in, in in the elections in the United States, in India, and in in all the countries. There is only one election that uh, has been all the all the mass media uh, has been against one candidate, and it was the 2016 election with Donald Trump. All the mass media was against Donald Trump. All the mass media, nobody was was betting for for Trump, and he won the elections. What is going to happen in now? So we don't know, but it, it happened exactly the same. All the people was was against Donald Trump. The best campaign uh, for Joe Biden was was the campaign against Trump. In in that sense, that the propaganda is being is being very important, but. We, we have seen the, in the in the social media all the sens censorship that we are that we are seeing. Uh, it's always BS. It. Then it has BS. It's partial. It's clientelist. It's like a, a Donald Trump didn't like to the uh, to the to the mass media. But the mass media didn't like Donald Trump. And in that sense, we have many many elements. That under scientific uh, research, uh, asseverate uh, that propaganda is is a very big element, it's a very important element for the decision of an election. Thank you, sir. Rajesh Kumar wants to know what is the present day equivalent to radios that were circulated in Germany. What? 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 Sorry. Pre present day equivalent to radios. That Germany had used, what what uh, technology is used today to do the same? The, the technology that is that is being used today to to make propaganda. The, as I has told you previously, it's like you are hunting minds, and now the society is divided in many social groups, and different social groups is using different technology to to consume information. Then the young people is using the, the smartphones, it's using the internet, it's using the social media and not Facebook, Facebook or Twitter, the, 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 the young people is using some other social media. And then the, the, the people who are a little bit older is using, is using the radio or they are using the newspapers or they are, you are hunting minds. You have to realize that uh, different social groups is using different te technology to consume information. You have to to research. Yeah, you have to know how these people is consuming information, and you have to know how to prepare a message to to prepare propaganda to to this format. It's not the same to prepare a narrative for the television than to prepare a narrative for Twitter or to prepare a, nar a narrative for Instagram. Instagram, for example, is we are talking about pictures. We knew, although we talked previously with the with the Creel Commission, how they they were using pictures to reach the illiterate. They were comprising complex information into a picture. This is this is very difficult. This is visual intelligence, and well, in that sense, I, I have to say that the the technology is is transversal. It's like a you have one one message. You have different technologies. You have to know how to adapt this message to the different technology. In that sense, all the, all, all the technology is going to be used to reach one to reach one goal with different formats. Thank you, sir. Hanya wants to know how do we look at the protest in terms of propaganda and warfare. Can the resistance in Poland right now against the banning of abortion be read as a rise against the propaganda of religion and it being forced on non-religious people? In this sense, I, I have to say that all the, the mass society is, is, is being moved by propaganda, always, always. J.K. Lul, the, the French philosopher I, I have referred previously, I'd say that the... Nowadays, that the 
the society has lost and the, the mystification, has lost the religious belief, has lost the philosophy, philosophical goals. In that sense, the, the population used to be empty. And when the population is empty, it comes the propaganda to fill the gap. And many of the protests that we are seeing all over the world, they are being promoted with propaganda techniques. The propaganda is the, is the way to mobilize to the population. It's, it, it, it doesn't matter if you are talking about the right, if you are talking about the left, if you are talking about the poor pro-life, if you are talking about the pro-choice. There is always propaganda te techniques to, to mobilize the, uh, the society, to, to mobilize the population. Thank you, sir. Anveshwar Singh wants to know how Chinese army is using psychological warfare in South China Sea on the Indian border. The, the psychological warfare of the, of the Chinese in the, in the South China Sea is not only the mass media but they are using also the, the army presence. The army presence, uh, we have a, one element that is the deterrence. When we have the South China Sea, plenty of uh, Chinese warships, this, this is, is provoking a psychological effect of deterrence that the, the other governments don't really want to get in trouble. And the, and the population is accepting the, the sovereignty of China over those waters. And also China is having the radio programs that is being, is being filtered through the, through the army. And radio programs, television programs, is, is inserting content in the newspaper of all the neighbor countries. Also, also in the European countries, here in, in, in Spain, you, you have so many, so many Chinese, Chinese channels in Chinese and, and, and in Spanish, both in, in both languages. And in, in that sense, the, the, the most important psychological factor of the army in the South China Sea is the deterrence with the presence of military army. Then we have the, the element we have seen previously. Thank you, sir. Samia Benyani wants to know, can we witness biological warfare in future, especially after the corona crisis? Yes, the, the biological warfare is also a sociological, a sociological element because in so many, in so many previous wars, then the the threat of of using biological or chemical warfare has been only sociological warfare. In the future, then, then there will be biological warfare. I suppose it is at the moment we we have so many so many elements that are are pointing out that maybe we are on the, under a biological warfare at the moment with the coronavirus. And I don't have any information about. But at the moment, in, in terms of psychological warfare, the, the threat of using chemicals or biological elements has always been deployed with the propaganda and has been a very important element to, to, de to defeat the enemy, only, only with the threat, not with the use. Okay, sir. Thank you. Uh, Ravin Thiran Vivek, and Vivek wants to know if there, is, there are any general rules for psychological warfare in the world. Mm. General, general, is, is general is the, the persuasion. You have to, to persuade. You have to, to link your, your interest with the interest of the population and the interest of your population against the, uh, the interest of the, of the, of the enemy. In, in that sense, the, the, the only thing is like a, you have to connect your wills, your goals with the psychology of the, of the people, of the population, of, of, the, of the soldiers of the other army. And it's the only rule that can be applied. Why? And because the cultural terms I have been speaking previously, if you had to to link your link, your interests, your wills with the Indian population or with the Chinese population or with the American population, you will have to use different propaganda propaganda programs or propaganda message. But as a as a general rule, the sociological warfare is hunting minds, hunting minds, linking minds to your wills. 
that is, I think is the, the only general rule that can be can be used trans transcultural talking. Thank you, sir. I am I audible. There is some connectivity issue. What? Yeah, yeah, you're audible, everybody. Okay. Thank you, sir, for patiently answering all the questions. I would now like to request Anta Asta Benzani, PhD scholar at the Department of Banara, uh, Political Science, Banaras Hindu University, to deliver the vote of thanks. Over to you, Asta. I'm sorry, I, I, I didn't understand very well. Oh, so okay. I requested <laughs> my colleague to deliver the vote of thanks. Yeah. Am I audible? Yes, you are. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I would like to convey a heartfelt gratitude to Sir Nuno Rodriguez for such an enlightening and insightful lecture on psychological warfare, theory and practical implications. I would also like to thank all the participants and making this an enlivening experience. I would like to extend my thanks to the president of AIRS, Ariba Moazam, for her tireless efforts which have made this event possible. I would like to thank Narendra Jarwal, Farisuddin Ali Moazam, Zeba Moazam, Rajesh Kumar and Evangeline Nongklaw for their help with making this lecture a success. Thank you. Over to you, Ariba. Thank you, Asta. And with this, we conclude the event. I would like to once again thank Senor Nuno Rodriguez for joining us from all the way from Spain and making this event a success. Thank you, participants, for joining us. And I hope to see all of you tomorrow at 11 for our eighth lecture by founder and first Vice Chancellor Rajan Harshay, sir, who will be talking to us on globalization and nation states. Thank you and have a great day and weekend ahead. Adios. Adios, que vaya bien. Thank you very much to you. Thank you so much for joining us, sir. Yeah, until One the next one. Thank you, thank you all for coming. Bye, sir. Bye. 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 Thank <laughs> you.